Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Excalibur Roundtable Tech Talk. I am Mike Fuson. This is part of our extended Tech Talk series with our friends at Halo ITSM. I'm joined by Tom Petley from Halo. Tom, how are you doing today? Hi, Mike. Yeah, doing well, thank you. How about yourself? I'm doing fantastic. I'm so glad to have you here. In today's episode, we're going to talk a little bit about the uh, Halo ITSM customer self-service portal. Um, as we know, customer self-service has become such an important uh, aspect of ITSM systems, um, especially, and, and I've, I've had this conversation with <clears throat> numerous customers, and I've actually done a presentation kind of talking about the role of self-service. As we start to look at the shift in our personnel that are coming into our organizations that are looking uh, for how do I do things? Having the ability to self-serve has become so critical. You know, back in the olden days when I started in IT, you know, you picked up the phone and you called the service desk. And our teams that are coming in now, our, our folks that we're working with today, um, come in and they have an expectation that they're gonna be able to try to ser serve themselves first, and then maybe, maybe have to pick up the phone and call a service desk. And so self-service has become that all important uh, aspect to doing that. And when you start to look at self-service, things like being able to present uh, our portions of our knowledge base, those portions that are accessible to an end user customer, uh, having that available within our knowledge base where they may be able to self-help, but then also the ability to raise an incident or a service request uh, from a, a uh, self-service perspective. And all importantly, actually what we start to talk about which is called deflection, right? One of the number one calls, or at least in the top five of almost every service desk I talk to, uh, you've got password reset in there as one of the calls they get most frequently. And one of the other most frequent calls is what is the status of my incident or service request? So what's the status of ticket number one, two, three, four, five? And you know that takes a service te te technician's time to look that up and give them an update. When they can have full visibility within a portal, it starts to take away the need for that call to occur. Um, they can check and see what the status is, what may be happening. Um, and of course, we can present to them any manner of information that we may need uh, to allow them uh, to have visibility into that. Um, and I know Tom. What we talked about is let's let's show let's show our audience a little bit about what the the Halo uh, ITSM self service portal looks like. Um, it's very intuitive, very straightforward, and you've built some really really neat features into it that I think uh, will get uh, uh, our you know, folks out there excited uh, about what the Halo platform can do for them. Yeah, absolutely. Let me share my screen now, and I can talk you through a few of those things. Okay, let me share that now. Hopefully you can see my screen okay. Yes, sir. Um, yeah, as you, as you described, self-service is, is massive. It's, it's becoming the um, almost one of the most important things um, that an ITSM tool provides. It's um, so important to kind of shift left and start to, like you say, deflect um, back to the users and give them a place where they can just go and search and view everything. There's a few just such a big topic. There's so many things I can cover in a self-service. There's just a few I want to highlight today. And I think firstly, the most important thing is this, um, this kind of big search bar we provide at the top here. If I just click into this, um, the idea is you're talking about the kind of younger generations coming through. And they're just so used to just going to Google and just searching, just typing things in and it returning exactly what they want. They don't want to necessarily have to click through multiple pages of catalogs and try and find things by yeah, just like clicking and searching. They just, they just like to have one place to go and just search from there. So that's why we built this, um, this single search bar here, which just searches through everything on the portal. And you'll see here, there's multiple kind of entities it can look through. So if they are looking for something to do with printing, um, we can see here, it's gonna suggest knowledge base articles that might solve it. If it's an incident, it might solve the incident. It'll also show any existing tickets they've got. So they might be, like you say, just cook, I might be kind of taking away that element where they have to call up the service desk to find the status. They can just go to here and search and they'll see instantly the, the status of that ticket. And also they might be requesting a new service. They might be wanting access to 
kind of additional print services or new credits or whatever it might be. So just with one search, you can see it um, takes you to all these different places. Just going back to the home screen here, um, always worth just saying that this can be completely branded to the um, to whichever organization it is. It doesn't have to be kind of Halo ITSM logos and color schemes. This could be whatever colors it might be and um, completely tailored towards giving that right experience for the users, kind of branded in line with kind of intranets and websites and things like that. And you can also have images on here as well. So you can have nice images of, or it might be a university campus, or maybe it's a, um, a picture of the local area or something like that, something nice that you can have on there just to kind of make it really look and feel how your users would want it to be. Um, so just one other thing you mentioned there, the current status of um, certain incidents and service requests. And we can just do that in the My Tickets bit here. And you'll see here that we've got these kind of statuses, um, very, very, it's very kind of immediately showing here. So we've got this new starter request, and that's currently awaiting approval there. And if I was then click into it further, you'll see here we can be presented with as much information or as little information as you want your users to have. Um, and if you want to, you can go kind of a step further and present exactly who it's waiting approval by, which specific user, which line manager it might be waiting approval on. So you've got lots and lots of options how you configure this. And then just going back to the home screen here, just one final thing I thought I'd talk about today is the service catalog, and just how intuitive that is for our um, for users going into it. So if I just go into the service catalog, you'll see here that we can present pictures, we can make it nice and um, kind of playful and um, simple for our users to find exactly what they want. I've got this structured here as a kind of a menu down the left hand side going into here and then filtering our, our service requests from there. But if you prefer, you can have it um, you describe a little, more, little bit more Amazon style where you, um, you click through different layers. So you could click into accounts and access, then click into the relevant service. Um, and then again, select the, the service you want. And then this has just got a bit of the dummy description behind it, but you can have a nice description of the service in here. And then if you click into the actual, the button here to request it, you can then go into the form itself. And these are just, again, very, very configurable, just in the, um, all the configurations kind of web-based. So you can just drag and drop the fields you want. Um, yeah, and have that kind of build out the forms you want. Um, and, and <coughs> I noticed, Tom, on the, uh, on the service catalog itself, there was a search option. So if a user searches, is that tied to keywords? Um, mm -hmm. Can, can, can we have both, both both keyword searches? So, you know, one of the things I think about is when you think of like a, uh, a new onboarding request or something like that, different people may frame it with different uh, verbiage. So uh, what what's that search tied to? So it's tied to, there's a few options it's tied to. It's tied to, firstly, the, obviously the name of the service. Uh, you can also associate tags. So you can associate kind of keywords to tag to it. And you can also, if you want to use this description field that sits, sorry, summary field, this one is, um, that sits beneath it, you can use that as a searching criteria. So when I, you'll see I search new here, you'll see it's kind of bringing back, it's actually using the, the summary in this case to bring back anything with the word new in it, but you can tag however you want it to work really. So extre extremely flexible to really provide that, you know, really excellent customer experience mm -hmm. and them being able to find things without having to hunt and peck through a service catalog, which I know for, for a lot of our, our customers is sometimes a frustration with service catalogs. Um, you know, because the service catalog serves, you know, it's a classification system. So it usually serves multiple purposes. One, to help a customer in a self-service portal context, tell us what they need, but also it helps with classifying things from an IT perspective. So we know how many of what type of request we may have received based on how we're going to build out our metrics. And so by making this an intuitive and easy search, and I even saw in the general search page on the main page, it actually is bringing these back as well. That's tying a bunch of different pieces together um, where they didn't even have to go into the service catalog. They, they actually were starting to be presented um, items that are part of the service catalog, but could also be uh, tickets that may relate to me or could be uh, um, uh, a knowledge article that may relate to things as well. So this gives us that that ability to to really get a, a full picture as a customer. 
Yeah, which, uh, yeah, it's it's just so important that we just make the the self service as easy as possible for our users, and we don't get drawn into some kind of overly engineered service catalog purely designed for IT. We've got to keep the um, keep the users in mind because by shifting kind of your your kind of emphasis onto self service, it just gives you so many benefits and frees up so much time. Um, that's kind of my take on it. Really. Oh no, you're 100 percent correct. I mean, what what we're seeing as the, the the huge drive, what's most important in everything is the customer experience, um, and making that customer experience easy. And you used the example of Amazon, which we see brought up by customers all the time, because that experience tends to be fairly intuitive and very easy. And you guys have kind of taken a page out of that book and said, how do we make this simple? Where there's multiple ways for them to get to what they're asking for or what they need help with. Um, and all along the way, um, we're gonna make it easy for them to search for it or drill down into it based on how they choose to interact with it, um, which I think is fantastic. And and, and we, we see this throughout the overall design of Halo, um, just in general, um, is that intuitive uh, uh, functionality, that intuitive nature of making the whole platform not just a self-service portal, a great customer experience and for ease of use. Um, <clears throat> we're gonna have a, a webinar upcoming here soon and uh, we're gonna be able to dive into this a little bit deeper. We hope you'll all join us. Tom, thank you for joining us and sharing a little bit about the, uh, the Halo uh, self-service portal. Uh, and I look forward to having you uh, join us again um, to share some of the, the wonderful things that you guys are doing at Halo with the Halo ITSM platform. Brilliant. Thanks a lot, Mike. Thanks for your time. Great. Thanks. Take care.